Hello everyone, I realize it may seem a bit late for me to be reviewing some Game of Thrones related memorabilia, but these Mega Construct sets did not hit store shelves, at least not in my region, until after the entire series was over. So I'm going to review them anyway, because I got them. This first one is called Battle Beyond the Wall and comes with 176 pieces. The highest original retail price was about 20 bucks and very quickly came down to 12. Now you can easily get it for between 10 and 13 dollars US, which seems to be a pretty a uh, pretty reasonable price for what you get here in total. Comes with three figures and a bit of wall that has been broken down a bit and this just forms a uh, you know, a little vignette style uh, battle area, you know, just a, a little section of terrain for you to display things. So you can bring in other figures here if you want, display them in different in different ways, either on the base platform down here or up along the edge. The little fire elements back here can be moved around. Looking at it around the back, it's obviously not designed to be viewed from around the back whatsoever, but I do appreciate the use of the the curved uh, corners down here in the front, you know, rather than just leaving it completely rectangular like brick-based things tend to do with their, you know, with their terrain. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the figures momentarily. I just want to make sure you saw. Well, is this pushed all the way down? Yeah, it's pushed about as far down as it'll go. So I want to make sure you saw exactly how this is built, so you can see lots of studs on the side. Construction for the ruin of the wall back there which makes sense, you know, rather than having everything just stacked up. I think this allowed it to have more detail. It is very polygonal, though, you know, it has those those uh, continuous and, and repeating angles. Which I don't know how I don't know how, uh, how I feel about that, I don't know how believable that is, but it's something different. I like the fire elements. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the figures, though. I do like this Night King. Looks like he almost has a dry brush technique applied to the armor there, just the amount of detail and the way the little rivets or whatever those are supposed to be, the studs up on the pauldrons each have their own little bit of silver on them. And I like what they did with the head, not just leaving it as one color and not even doing it as a marbling effect between a couple of colors. Oops, sorry about the focus there, but you can see his spear, but the head is actually done with paint. So there are multiple paint applications placed on it to give it some depth and some presence so it isn't just completely see-through. Now, because it is based on a transparent light blue colored plastic, uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a soft plastic, you are able to see the neck ball joint underneath there. That is unfortunate. It's not as obvious when you're not looking at it this close and with a bright background behind it, but just look at the, the clothing there, the armor that he has on. That is fantastically well done. And overall, I just feel like this is a well done figure. Maybe a little bit too far into the, the icy flesh kind of direction they went, maybe. But I think it's better to go too far in that direction than to leave it too solid and opaque and not looking icy enough. Next, we have one of two versions of Jon Snow that they made for this series, at least that they've released so far. They may do more in the future, for all I know. But... Uh, the face does look a little bit derpy when you look at it this close. There's just so much at stake when they print or paint eyes, whether they're going for pupils or they're going for the cornea. If they use the holes like they did on this one or they paint it all, no matter what, if anything is off just ever so slightly, it's going to make the character look derpy. Now, I think they did a pretty admirable job here, given that this is a mass-produced piece. But his right eye, we're looking at right now, on our left, looks cross-eyed. It looks derpy, which is unfortunate. His uh, facial hair is also a little bit askew, just slightly, perhaps. I think it, I think it is, just slightly, but it's not bad. Uh, from a reasonable distance, it looks pretty good. It's only when you get up really close that you start to notice that, ah, it's not that great. I love the wash that was done on this piece. It's actually a slightly soft piece, so it has some flexibility to it. And then they've got some some paint splatters that were used on the boots and some of the other elements of clothing. Those look pretty good to represent bits of snow. And around the back, a little bit too metallic, I think, for this lower part of the, the coat there. And he also looks a little bit thin up top, but that's because they got the, 
the dual uh, scabbard, I guess, around him. What do you, what do you, what do you call it? It's just uh, you know, doubled up so you can put the sword in either side. The sword is the correct one. It has a little wolf head on it. That's a very nice detail that they did making this, this mold. You can see that right there. It has a paint application to go with it as well. And that's pretty much it for Jon Snow. Lastly, they include one white or white walker, which reuses a headpiece that they did for the Call of Duty Zombies lines in the past. I don't mind that reuse. A bunch of other new molds are used for other parts of the body. That is good. And it might not be the best looking head for this theme, but I think it works. I think it works more than well enough with the, the help of all these additional other molds used for the arms and especially the body. That was really important. And then also this piece here, which seems to be hanging down just a little bit, but that's kind of a, a flexible piece there as well. Has a good amount of detail. Once again, this has plenty of wash on it and it also has some speckles where they just scattered some, you know, kind of do the, the uh, slightly damp toothbrush sort of effect where you just splatter a little bit of, of paint on there to get some of the, the snow you know, the suggestions of snow on it. So he looks dirty and he looks worn and he looks like he's in the environment. So that's all good. I really can't complain about that. Comes with the ax, which has a little bit of metallic flake in the blade. And I think this one works out pretty well. It's too bad that they didn't get in on this theme much earlier. They could have come up with lots of these, just like they did with the Call of Duty Zombies. Next up here is the Iron Throne. This one comes with 260 pieces and originally retailed for $30 US. That was the suggested price, but it came down pretty quickly. Now it's easy to find this for 20 and I've seen it as low as 15, which is a pretty good deal. Again, for the amount of stuff that you get here. There was another company that previously had the license to do Game of Thrones brick based construction collectibles and their version of this scene was larger and had more realistic detail, but it relied almost exclusively on unique pieces, unique to that set. This set, on the other hand, relies more heavily on parts that are normal and interchangeable and that, that Mega Constructs fans have seen before, with some exceptions. So the throne itself does have exclusive molds used for the two side pieces and also the back behind it, the back rest, if you will. But you can see, if you look closely enough, you can see that there are some clips in there and there's, there are some actual swords. Those are individual sword pieces that can be wielded by figures if you, if you take them out. So there is some assembly involved there, even though they did these specialized molds, they still made it so that you had to assemble some stuff yourself and there is a fair amount of construction that goes on underneath there to set all of the angles right and everything. And I think the end result is a pretty good compromise between uh, realism, you know, level of detail and just a traditional building experience. I feel like if if you get one of these types of sets, you want to be able to put it together. You don't want to rely too exclusively, at least in my opinion and from what I've seen of other people's opinions as well. A lot of people don't want to rely too exclusively on exclusive parts. Now that window right there, that little insert is interchangeable because this set is all about not knowing who is going to end up on the Iron Throne at the end of the series. Remember, this was intended to be released or you know, keep in mind, this was intended to be released before the end of the season, at uh, the end of the series. So this was giving you some options like would the Night King come through and just wipe out everybody and take out everything or would Cersei stay there or you know just they just gave us some options not all of the options but some of the options so this also has a different version of Jon Snow and I'll give you a, a closer look at these figures uh, very soon as well but I do want to complete the look at the rest of the throne itself around the back this one looks a lot better a lot more presentable I feel like this is presentable around all angles and to go with the the whole theme of of choosing, you know, or, or not being able to know in advance uh, who would end up on the throne, they do have these additional inserts that you can put in the little window thing up there. So you can guess what that one's for. <laughs> these are these are nice pieces, and these are printed, pretty pretty good quality prints right there. This one, 
shows the return of the Targaryens, like so. Bring this out of the way there, you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, this actually has a lensing effect because it's not flat. So that's kind of cool. You can see that going through there. Just has an interesting effect. And then lastly, if Jon Snow were to have won it all, if there was a throne at the end, then it would have had this above it. That's relatively simple. The, the least interesting of the four. So here's what the throne looks like with nobody sitting on it, and that's probably pretty unexpected there, right? It doesn't just look like a regular seat. Uh, that gap behind is awkward to me, but the idea here is that they just wanted to make sure that a figure could sit there securely, regardless of what they're wearing. And this little clip here with the bar on the end just goes into the back of the standard hole on Mega Constructs figures that they use for all sorts of posing options. So this just ensures that when you put somebody there, they will stay there, you know. So it's a good practical consideration, and you don't see any of that when the figure is there. But it is a little bit awkward if there is no figure there. You can take off this bar here, but then you still have the, the weird gap behind. So here's another version of Khaleesi, and the paint applications on that face are good. And the prints are good. It's nice and consistent. Uh, don't know how much it looks like Amelia Clark, to be honest. I think the sculpt is pretty good, but the lipstick kind of throws it off. But the the paint applications, well, I should say the prints on everything else for the robe there are pretty nice, pretty you know finely detailed. The lines are pretty good. Uh, the alignment is pretty good. They do they do not go all the way around. 360 degrees like on the arms, but you can see there's an additional paint application going down the back of this with that tan Beneath there. That's pretty good. The hairpiece is great Has a lot of depth for something that is so light usually and also a slightly soft material It's it's very common amongst toys and models for something like that to To not show depth even if the depth is there oftentimes there will be so much light that goes through that uh, it just kind of it hides some of its own shadows but this is done well it's not too soft it's not too silicone like overall i think it's done pretty well but the the face is too pink i believe and the the lips are just too thick and too saturated this version of the night king i don't know if they were going to try to call this exclusive or not it does look a little bit different in in the head in that this one does have a lot more of the dark blue applied to it, but I don't know if that's intentional or if it's just a production variation compared, compared to the other. So this looks a little bit more opaque, a little bit more bluish, while the hands are still that light, practically cyan color. And he has the different weapon here. You can see how that is constructed and how it appears. I feel like having more of the dark blue on the head helps to hide away the appearance of the ball joint of the neck that's inside of there. So I actually prefer this one myself, but again, it may just be a production variation. The rest of it looks identical to me. Obviously, this is a completely different version of Jon Snow. It is supposed to have the same head. So here you can see just how a little bit of difference in the alignment of the eyes can actually help. So he doesn't look as cross-eyed here. Looks a little bit more consistent. The facial hair is actually slanted the opposite direction of the, of the other one that I got. But this does show you more of the head. And just in general, this looks pretty good from most angles, especially from a reasonable distance. And the print on the robe is fantastic. It's just, it's really, really finely done. That is so nice. So, so very nice. There are paint applications for the wrists, for the cuffs there. This is, you know, for what appears at first glance to be a pretty simple figure. It's actually pretty nice. And to have all the, the printing going all the way down around the back as well. Kind of deluxe. Pretty happy with this one. And uh, I, got, I got lucky as well. This came out pretty much the way it's intended to, you know. No major mistakes with this one. No... 
no misalignments that really matter much. Finally, Cersei Lannister has been sitting on the Iron Throne on a shelf in my office for like a couple weeks now. And as a result, the lower parts of her robes have uh, taken a little bit of that sitting pose and are not immediately relaxing back. So I completely regret that. And it is something to keep in mind. If you want to keep your figures in good shape, you might not want to keep them on that throne after all, which is a little bit of a shame. But, I mean, it's just a reality of physics. No matter what you do, these more flexible pieces are going to try to hold some of the bend that they're kept in for an extended period of time. So I don't know what to do about that. But let me tell you, that head looks perfect. It looks just like the actress. Everything about it is so good for how tiny this is. How just a, just a tiny little thing. And it's mass-produced. So, top marks for that no doubt i think uh the the mold itself really really helps with that and then i did get a pretty well produced one here got the little little crown on there as well which appears to have good alignment of its slightly champagne gold kind of uh, it's almost like a br champagne bronze color of that paint that's applied to it it's also applied to the top of her robe the the iron well not iron but the metallic elements there that all you know like the kind of gothic elements that all looks pretty good and you can see there's lots of metallic flake not too much but plenty of it throughout this from a reasonable distance you actually don't see that you just see a little bit of metallic sheen to the top and to the arms it's not until you get really close that you really start to notice the fine little glittery appearance little glittery details so all things considered I think this is pretty good, but it is unfortunate that these these kind of silicone style pieces do hold some bends after a while. I, I just don't know what to do about that. And finally, following in the footsteps of the breakout beasts and other egg surprise but not surprise type of, of sets that Mega has put out in their original lines, they've done all three of the baby dragons this is intended to be baby form and i wanted to show you the entire process of getting this open so that you can see the entire thing because i think that opening it is really part of the experience of of getting this and owning it so all three are available and i just got the one that matches the adult that i have drogon and this just has a bit of tape or a shrink wrap around it a little spot with some perforations the egg itself doesn't look too bad. I mean, it would have been nice to have some, some parts to cover up the top so you don't have those exposed studs. It is nice to be able to put something up there. So if you want to put a figure on top of there, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to connect things. You also have anti-studs on the underside and some holes that bars can go through. So you have some options. But I do wish there were some options included with this set to smooth that off because the rest of this texture is pretty good. It doesn't look too metallic. There's very little metallic sheen on this. Just a little bit. I feel like there's some... I'd have to look really, really close. Let me see if I can do it with it. Yep, with the help of the camera, I can now see what my naked eyes could not see. There is some metallic flake in this color. It's kind of burgundy sort of color. But I'm just going to open this. Yeah, it just pops straight out. And inside, you get instructions. And you get multiple bags of parts. Little parts, big major body parts, and skeletal parts for the wings for bones. And these are the wings themselves in separate bags. They are kind of silicone. They are very, very soft, very soft pieces. And let me go ahead and get that built for you. So as I assembled this, it has 30 pieces, they say. It felt like a little bit more than that. Uh, at first, I started to feel like it was going to end up being bigger than I expected. And then once I got everything together, the last parts are to put the wings on, then it ended up about the size that I expected, which is not too shabby for just a baby dragon. You know, it's definitely not full size or anything like that, but this is actually pretty nice. Again, the wings are a super, super soft. It's a silicone uh, kind of rubbery, material feels very fleshy which is kind of realistic like it it 
sticks almost to your fingers. It doesn't feel sticky, but there's a lot of a ton of traction there, so it just makes it seem organic. There are a couple of bones that go through each of those. Give you a little, a little more light here. There we go. So that you know keeps them in a reasonable shape and everything. But you can bring those together if you want. You can bring that up if you want. You know, fold all that together. Look, look at this level of of texturing for all the scales, the forearms, the upper arms. You have a bunch of different joints. These can rotate around right here, so you can get different kind of posing. Bring these back and forward. I'll go ahead and spread this back out. Bring it in a little bit like that. So I can bring both of these together. The uh, lower legs, hind legs, I guess, the legs, I guess, don't have knees that can articulate. That is one thing that's, that's missing here. Would have been nice to be able to straighten those out. But then you probably would have needed ankles as well and would have increased the price and all. I'm okay with this. Tail does have a bit of gap there in order to have that ball joint in there to allow you to really move the tail around. This is a nice little extension they have here. Again, relatively soft pieces are used throughout this in many places. Now that will tend to fall out a little bit, so that's just something to look out for. You know, just as you move it around. When you leave it alone, it's not going to come off on its own just as you rotate it. So you can get lots of little spirally shapes. You know, they got a lot of spirals into the, the tail segments. And looking along the back, Again, lots more scaly detail. These are soft silicone pieces. Another one that you insert there. Again, for the neck. And then the head is adorable. Looks just like the real thing. And it's printed well. The paint applications are good. The fire piece is from flamethrowers from different series that they've done before. It's marbled with a couple of different colors in there. And you don't have to leave that in there if you can... If you want to do that, you know, you can do so. And then the head comes pre-assembled with multiple parts together. See, the teeth are painted all the way around. You can independently articulate the upper, you know, the head itself and the jaw. And when the jaw comes up, you can see part of the, the back of the jaw as well. So more of it becomes apparent. So like that, okay, that's cool. But then it just seems more complete like this. And you can also articulate the top separately. So they've got an interior piece. This will help to, to show you what's going on. They've got an interior piece that holds on to the flame. Focus. There we go. And then you can see the, the upper head part, main head, is able to rotate. And then the lower jaw is able to rotate separately. So those are, those are all separate parts. I just think they work all together very well. And that looks like little baby Drogon right there. That is pretty darn cool. So this is nicely done. Uh, I believe these started out priced at 10 bucks a pop, something like that. Now you can find them for half that if you're lucky in some places. But uh, I think even 10 bucks is not a bad price for what you get here. I think there's quite a bit of quality, quite a bit more quality than I expected for something that comes out of a not surprise egg sort of product oftentimes you know cheap stuff is sold that way and this isn't cheap stuff there's there are good materials used here good paint applications tons of articulation this might be my favorite thing out of the three different products that i've reviewed in this video pretty cool and you can get all three versions if you want and the the great thing about these is that they're dragons so you know you don't have to worry about this is kind of going out of data. I was hoping they had the pictures of the others here that don't. But they just give you tiny little pictures. Maybe you can see that here. You don't have to worry about these going out of date just because everybody forgets about Game of Thrones because of the end of Season 8. You know? They're dragons. Oh, yeah. And about the, uh, the tops of the egg. The eggs. They do kind of have a solution for that. You know, still some of the, the, uh, the studs are there but not all this allows you to pose your little baby drogon in flight how fantastic is that whoops well you're not able to see it there there we go what do you think of that i think that's pretty cool a deluxe little inexpensive product nicely done mega way to go
So I will close with a look at the empty packaging because people have consistently told me they like to see the packaging or at least have the option to see the packaging, how these actually arrive. And that is it for those three products. On this one, you would see the, the figures when it's, you know, in the, in the store or whatever. On the shelves, you would see the four figures in there to suggest the, the possibilities and also to give you the preview of what they look like. So that's nice to be able to actually see them and that is that thank you very much for watching and uh sorry this is you know a little late but mega itself was more than a little late with it so i'm just keeping up with the with the trend there <laughs> i'll talk to you again soon